Tonight, hunting down the hunters, we expose the men who make big money from the killing of protected and endangered animals. Two thirds down, one third up, right on, on the shoulder blade. Smoke him in there and he'll bounce around and make a lot of noise and run off and die, probably. This is the Kruger National Park, perhaps the world's best known reserve for wild animals, running free in an area the size of Wales. Here, millions of tourists, the majority of them British, have enjoyed seeing the well-protected big game that gives South Africa its reputation as a safe haven for the continent's endangered species. Our investigation has uncovered the shocking truth these tourists have not been told. No animal here is safe, even the king of the jungle. We've discovered that even lions are being stolen from under the noses of game wardens to die at point-blank range and end up on some rich man's wall. Spain's Costa del Sol, playground of the wealthy, is where the cook reporters come to uncover the unacceptable face of big game hunting. The wealth is conspicuous. Less obvious are the unscrupulous middlemen who cater to the basest of instincts. Middlemen like Jose Iglesias and Luis Gomez, on the face of it legitimate sportsmen. But for the right money, they'll arrange for you to shoot anything you like, any way you like, anywhere in the world, however endangered. Within minutes of meeting Mr. Gomez, the Cook Report undercover team was offered the illegal shooting of gorillas, tiger and jaguar. As his credentials, he offered this video of a jaguar hunt in Bolivia, complete with posturing client and prohibited kill. Back in Marbella, we set up a bogus company. We pretended to be agents for rich people who wanted hunting trophies, no matter how illegally obtained. This is a story of cruelty and greed. From an office in this country, renowned for its devotion to hunting in all its forms worldwide, we set up a cover company which offered rich rewards to game hunters who could arrange for our clients to shoot anything at all. The response was astonishing. The Spanish hunters recommended South Africa for the sort of hunting we were interested in. Our team found this ranch, run by professional hunter Chris Sussons, on the edge of the famous Kruger National Park. The distressing pictures you're about to see, taken on a legal Sussons hunt, were to massage his French client's ego. Might be a long trek. It was a short trek, but a slow death for this lion. It took several minutes and six more shots than we're going to show you for the lion to die. They didn't want to spoil the trophy by shooting him in the head. Sussons can also arrange the illegal shooting of big cats in small enclosures in what's called a canned hunt. The only time I can actually guarantee an animal is when it's going to be like a canned animal, which I don't like doing. Mm -hmm. And that's normally not done in this area. We have to go up towards the free state, mm -hmm. where you'll get the odd operator there that's got lions in big camps, and you can go into a big camp and you can shoot a lion there. Basically, this camp where they, this chap's got the lions is about a 20 hectare camp. Bruce Hamilton was once a farm manager on what he thought was a lion breeding project. When he discovered the specialty was actually canned hunting, he left in disgust, having taken this video. The lioness has been separated from her bewildered cubs, who still follow their mother's steps on the other side of a wire enclosure. As they look on, a German hunter is preparing for the kill. It's totally disgusting what happens here in South Africa. A lot of wealthy game ranch owners make a lot of money out of shooting lions which have been bred in cages and purely for that purpose. They take them out either by darting or by baiting them out of these cages and 
an overseas client will come in sitting on the back of a Land Rover or on foot and just shoot it for his own pleasure. Roy Platt is the wealthy man who owned that lioness. We contacted him to see if he'd sell us another of his tame lions for a canned hunt. Keen to take our client's money, he lets us film examples of the prey without showing the wire enclosures to preserve the illusion of a fair, free-range hunt. We asked him to record a personal invitation to our bogus client. He was happy to oblige. Mr. James Rogers, uh, nice to meet you. Look, hope to look forward to meeting you in South Africa. I'd like to say, as you can see, it looks like we've got just the line here for you, and we look forward to you uh, being able to come out and shoot this line and have a trophy for your office or home as it pleases you. Mr. Platt had also wanted to kill this young lioness, Shamwari, because she had rickets. Conservationists stepped in, and one of South Africa's few lion sanctuaries is now her home, safe from what the owner regards as a barbaric practice. Can lion hunting is like shooting fish in a barrel. It's unethical, it's bloody easy, and it's earning a lot of people a lot of money. For the moment, away from lion hunting to a different quarry in London, as Luis Gomez, the Spanish middleman, arrives to explain how his plans for the illegal gorilla hunt are progressing. We meet him at Heathrow and take him to the man we've told him is the brother of a hugely wealthy client. We have, uh, Grace. We have confirmation, Grace. and he, he told me that we will Grace, yes, yes. We'll get a gorilla. But I said, are they mountain gorillas? Do they have grey on the back? Gomez, on the left, has already offered us gorilla, but is guarded in front of our interpreter. But he confirms we'll get exactly what we want and wants another $12,000 to smuggle the gorilla's head out of the country. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do, just to keep you going, I'm going to give you $2,000 in advance. Gomez refuses to give a receipt, but will supply the coordinates of the hunting ground in Cameroon so we can fly out undetected. The hunt in prospect horrifies gorilla experts like Ian Redmond, who says there are only 12,000 of these imposing animals left. They're almost human, and to go and shoot one, it's, it's I guess it's, a, it's a, a sickening insight to the kind of species that we belong to. Hunting you're going to do, your brother's going to do. Gomez says we can also hunt endangered tigers in Malaysia using his corrupt contacts. The animal he wants. Ma, yeah, we so, so he will do exactly the same for the tigers. He will do the same. But why risk being caught hunting endangered tigers in Malaysia when you can shoot captive ones in a private canned hunt in South Africa for $100,000 apiece? This is another wealthy businessman, Farney Roberts. His farm has Bengal tigers, black leopard and jaguar. Like Roy Platt, he's eager to hide the wire enclosures from our wealthy clients and even cuts a hole in the wire for our camera. No hunting permit would ever be given to shoot these cats, and certainly not in the can conditions Mr Roberts has on offer. I've got enclosures which like a hundred meters by um, hundred meters or something like that, where you and your guy and the tiger can't come out. Is this one available to yeah, shoot? This one is available. This beautiful jaguar is surplus to Mr. Roberts' requirements, so for a hundred thousand dollars, our client can shoot him too. We showed our evidence to actress Virginia McKenna who's been devoted to the well-being of the big cats of Africa ever since she starred in Born Free with Elsa the Lioness in the 1960s. I don't think anyone except someone with a sick or warped mind could call this kind of hunting sport, and from the evidence that I've seen on your programme, it should be banned from this moment onwards. South Africa again and more doomed lions. This time it's hunter Mossy Mostert, who runs another outfit operating on the edge of the Kruger Park. He wants to sell our client one of his 86 caged animals for hunting, including his rare white lions in five years' time, when they've bred enough to spare. 
but it's in Kruger National Park, the world's best known conservation area, that the king of the beasts is quietly and secretly disappearing. In three days in Kruger, we've seen lots of wildlife, but neither hide nor hair of a lion, the very symbol of this national park. And one good reason, perhaps, why lions are less often seen than they used to be is that they're being lured across the border and into the sights of the canned hunters. It's easy to see why the pressure is on to provide big game hunters with a steady supply of prey. The Americans alone spend $110 million a year in South Africa obtaining trophies like these. And it's a market which is growing rapidly as the taxidermists of South Africa work round the clock to send their wealthy customers their bloody souvenirs. So many allowed to be exported because they feel that they're endangered, which is also a load of nonsense. This is Tracy MacDonald, who runs what she claims is one of the biggest hunting outfits in Southern Africa with her husband, Sandy. Last year, she boasts, her company arranged the shooting of more than a thousand animals. But we've discovered many of the most profitable ones are actually stolen. Once again, we pay a hefty deposit and captured by our secret camera, she explains how the tourists and the South African government are being cheated as Kruger Park lions are stolen for canned hunting through the boundary fences. You just dig a little bit under the fence and you leave a little piece of rotten meat on that side and then you drag it with the blood running through and that lion picks that scent up so easily and it just comes through. Stealing lions from Kruger these days is literally a push-button job. One, to turn off the electric fence, and the other, to start the lion call tape on your ghetto blaster. It doesn't take long for the lions to answer the call and come right under the fence. And this is the fate a Kruger lion will face. Death in the closely controlled conditions of a canned hunt. Bruce Hamilton explains how the lioness met her end. The lioness had three cubs. We took her out of the camp that morning into a 100 hectare enclosure, which is not legal. And she was still running up and down the fence. She wouldn't leave the cubs, even though a bait was used to try and lure her away from the fences so that the, the, that the hunter wouldn't see the fences and um, be caught up in the illusion. Some illusion. Even though she wouldn't leave the fences, he still shot her. Could see the cubs on the other side of the fence, but that didn't bother them. Even when the lioness was skinned and the milk was pouring out of her teats, it didn't bother the hunter nor the professional hunter that she was still producing milk for those cubs, and now they didn't have a mother. Just unbelievable, isn't it, really? To separate a, a lioness from her cubs, to wound the animal so that she dies in, in agony. How anyone could actually find pleasure in that kind of hunting, so-called, um, must be really sick. That's all I can say. In Barcelona, we're about to meet Jose Iglesias and Luis Gomez who think they're collecting $40,000 from us for the illegal gorilla hunt in Cameroon. All the animals they've offered us, in perfect English, are protected by international law under what's called the CITES Convention. I think you should know something. I am a television reporter, and you have been offering us three animals protected to shoot. We can shoot gorillas. Picture in this book, which you've just shown me, the gorillas that we could shoot, you're offering us Jaguar, that's CITES too, that's illegal. You've offered us Tiger, you are offering us the opportunity to kill CITES 1 animals. This is illegal. 
illegal animals to kill. And what's more, you speak perfectly good English. You do. And what's more, what's more, I have been, what's more, Mr. Iglesias, I have been recording you speaking perfectly good English on that microphone. Iglesias and Gomez beat a retreat, but they'll be hearing from the Spanish authorities. Now we've passed on a dossier of their illegal hunting activities. The South African hunters think they're taking businessman James Rogers, alias Roger Cook, for a ride. He's not meant to know this is a canned hunt. In fact, we're conning the hunters by recording the event for what we say is a vanity video. Wheezing and puffed up to play the part of an incompetent and unfit hunter in need of all the help he can get, and easy prey for Mossy Mostert, who owns the land, and Sandy McDonald, who runs the hunt. It's not too bad once you're here. It's on the road, you know, it's pretty bad out there. Let's step inside. Let's have something to drink and uh, go through a bit of a procedure here. And what we'll They split the $18,000 being paid for this one-hour expedition. No television program has ever before got this far inside the secret and sordid world of canned hunting. But first, a quick lesson in lion killing. Being a park lion, he's not too wary about uh, humans, cars and that sort of stuff, which means he's pretty relaxed. But once he stood up, we've got his attention. It's very important. The shot placement is very important. Our first shot is the most important shot. After that, we'll sort out any problems if there are any. And what you've got to remember, Mr. Rogers, is that we want to try and break a limb. That's the most important thing on any cat. Now, he's got, just follow his leg up. Two thirds down, one third up from, is, is the vital spot. And to break a leg. We really want to get him that, if it so happens that he, he'd be wounded, he's got one leg less, which makes it a hell of a lot easier for us. It's easier on the dogs, it's easier on everything else. Now, he'll have a bigger mane than this, maybe a bit longer this way than this one. So it's important that mentally you don't take the mane for his chest. Mm. Remember it's that fine. his chest inside there, it's behind. All you need to do is when he's either looking straight at you, which is probably what he'll do, you shoot him just under the chin here. Just, just shoot him in there. Because he'll be looking down at us. Because the grass is thick, it's hot, he's in a cool place. Side on, two thirds down, one third up right on, on the shoulder blade. Smoke him in there and he'll bounce around and make a lot of noise and run off and die, probably. And they're not difficult animals to kill. They, they, they're soft skinned. They have a very highly developed nervous system, which means that all the shock effect from the bullet is taken into their body and absorbed and it hurts them. Well, I don't claim to be a McDonald admits he's offering us a Kruger Park lion but he's not telling Mr. Rogers what he told our undercover team earlier on. It's a canned lion, make no mistake. But it's a very nice size, but it's, it's, it's at a bait, and it's going to be fairly easy for him to have a sh the first shot of it. Every part of the crooked business is recorded on tape as Mr. Rogers' cameramen film their so-called client's expedition. What do you do? is we'll go to the camp and we'll let you guys have a few shots at a target. This is going to be hopeless, I tell you. First two shots. Yes. And that's your last one. What, you mean two went through there? Two yeah. went through there, which is really good. <laughs> that's, that's a million to one. <laughs> Target practice over, the pretense of tracking a roaming wild animal resumes. From our side, it's all fixed. Okay. You guys, and I'll keep him happy, I know what to say at the right times and all the rest of it. So, you can tell me um, what's it at? Right, basically, what's, what's been happening is that. Um, this area is adjacent to the Kruger National Park. And uh, what we have is a movement of, of usually old male lions that come out. But once they come in here, we keep them in. Um, they're, they're by virtue of the fact that we have a, um, a 
pretty good bait out there. And being an animal that is lazy by nature, he's going to stick around by the bait. And this is a really good time to get him now because he's lying at the bait. The conspiracy continues as we move closer to the lion, now dazed by drugs and unable to escape. So I've turned closer, it's a hell of a nice lion. We're going to, nobody will suspect anything. Right. We do a lot of them. Out in the bush, the hunters go through the charade of tracking down the prey, although they know precisely where it is. All this is just for show. And here he is. After 20 minutes of circling the same small area of bush, we find our Kruger lion, lured from the reserve with meat, then drugged to give the hunter the chance to kill at close range without the slightest risk to himself. I want you to look at him through the scope. I want you to find his eyes. I want you to follow his neck down and shoot him where the mane ends on his shoulder. Shoot him in. Take your time. Remember, he's lying. He's hot. He doesn't want to move away. But if we get out of the side, the wind is bad. You have to shoot him from here. Well, let me tell you why I'm not going to shoot this lion. Because he doesn't stand a chance, and you know he doesn't. And I'm not a businessman. I'm a television reporter yeah. making a program about canned hunts. And that's what this is, isn't it? It's there he's this is a canned hunt, isn't it? This I'm not shooting that lion. It doesn't stand a chance. It's been drugged. You told us earlier. You know it has. My colleagues are all from the same television company. Let this sink in. This is a canned hunt. I am not shooting that lion, and neither are you. It doesn't stand a chance. It's been tranquilized. It's a lion that's come across or it's been, been baited across. It has been baited. It's been baited across from the National Park. Yeah, he has. So he actually belongs to somebody else. No, he belongs to the landowner. Belongs to him. And he's been baited, and that's not it's ethical, is it? No, that's ethical. He's been darted. That's not ethical. He's being shot from a vehicle. That's not ethical. He's from the park. Let He's in here. here. No, we're not going by foot. We're turning around and going back. I'm paying for this. We're not shooting that lion. Caught red-handed, MacDonald pressured us to hand over our tapes. Then, when we tried to leave the Mostert farm with them, the mood turned ugly. We found a roadblock of heavily armed men stopping us reaching the safety of the public highway. Even when the police arrived, they wouldn't let us go. Eventually, the gate was opened, but the hunters made it very clear they still wanted our tapes of the canned hunt. During an hour of negotiation, we smuggled out the tapes and got a stern warning from the police not to return. Back in Britain, we took our dossier on canned hunting to the South African High Commission. Our findings shocked the New Republic's Deputy High Commissioner. Look, I'm, I'm real appalled. I'm, I'm real appalled that something like this is still going on in my country. I promise you, I, I, I'm saying to you, after this, I'm going to be talking to some people from the environment in the ministry and, and make them aware of uh, what you guys found out and, and, and ask them if they could look into this because it must be stopped and it must be stopped immediately. Sadly, that will be too late to help our drugged, canned lion. Before we left, the hunters told us he would only survive until the next wealthy foreigner came to take his life for money.